thought Christine from Missouri Star was going to stop by. That's what Heidi said, but maybe not. I don't know who that is. She was at the Tulip Festival for a little bit. She worked for Missouri Star doing like Block Magazine, and she was the one that had like a watercolor show. Do you remember? No. Her? You'd probably recognize her. I probably would. She's I don't, nice. I don't remember uh, some things. I remember others. Do you remember all the food options we had when we were there? That is one thing I'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember how sad you were when we came back and you were just like... I just couldn't believe the options that were available in Utah. Kenan, that is how it is everywhere else in the world. How much did Let's... you hate having to go to Missouri where there's nothing? It's hard it because is. that is what I would like right after when we were going to go to lunch the first day we were back. Keenan was just like, I don't want to eat anything. I, I walked out the store. Here. I walked right. I looked at Subway and I stopped. I turned around <laughs> and I walked the other direction. I was like, there's nothing to eat in this and town. And Keenan was just like, there's nothing. And I'm just like, this is my life now. Where it used to be what you just experienced. Where literally anything that I felt like eating was within a 20 minute drive. Which like, is which is ridiculous. Anything. Fine the, dining. If I were to drive food, west like 20 anything. minutes, there, I'd be past Smithville in the middle of nowhere. I know. If I were to drive east, I'd be past Breckenridge in the middle of nowhere. I went to the hangout today because the last four times I've gone to Subway and I'm like, I can't, I need a break from Subway. And then I go to the hangout and Listen, I'm just like, this isn't better. Nothing we, is better. We are live. <laughs> we love the hangout. <laughs> If you're familiar with the city of Hamilton. I just, I just want food options. I just. When I got to Utah, Brock kept asking me where I wanted to eat. And I'm like, well, what are my options? And he's like, anything. Name it, it's here. I'm like, but what are my options? Anything, and then you can also have it delivered oh, too. Yeah. Even if they don't deliver, you can get it delivered. Like. Brock Someone and I, when we you. went to California, we had almost every dinner meal delivered because I was feeling really crappy and tired. And so it's like, what do you feel like? Hawaiian. Yeah. Let's order Hawaiian food and get it delivered. And we could. Yeah, which is so great. You would think. No, never mind. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. You don't have to comfort me. I've oh. lived here for like 25 years. <laughs> You're used to this. I'm used to this. I just had no idea. <laughs> You just had no idea what I it was literally like have traveled outside. everywhere with the military, but never like to a city to stay and seen the options they have. Yeah, it's it's disgusting. It's you would think like a place like Cameron would at least have Uber or something, you know? Yes. But maybe that's just Cameron doesn't have <laughs> Cameron doesn't have a Walmart with pickup. Yeah they do. No they don't. Yes they do. No. Yes. In the back. <laughs> In the back? Yeah, you know, like in the bathrooms in the back, people go to like do number two because no, I mean, front. I mean like <laughs> <laughs> while I do know, you mean you very can order well. you you like do like what big grocery stores do where groceries. you can uh, you can like buy your cart and then the workers assemble it. You just pull up to the front, one. they bring it, it out. That's what I'm talking about. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't have that. Everywhere around us does. Oh, you mean Kansas City an hour away? Like, where else is everywhere else? Excelsior Springs. Do you know where that is? Yes, I do. They have it. Okay, but St. That's... Joe has it. What is that city down past Chillicothe? They have it. Past Chillicothe, Brookfield, they have it. Cameron does not have it. I just thought there's things past Chillicothe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I saw the question in your eye. I was, I'm glad you told me. Uh, give the pregnant lady what she wants. Yes. Who wrote that? Mary. Mary, thank you. My own Walmart gro has grocery store pickup in South Bend, Indiana. I think that's what I-N is. Yeah. Can't be Illinois. <laughs> I don't like to... To comment on things. I'm just like not this. gonna assume. I just don't like to like say anything one way or the other because I, <laughs> I, I don't know anything. Usually wrong. <laughs> I'm usually wrong. 
Aisha said Hamilton is a great place, but Aisha, that is because you visit here. And whenever you visit a city, it's very different, right? We're, like, I mean, we're not saying that Hamilton is not, not a great place. I'm just saying when it comes to lunch options. It's a, it's a cute, it's like You a have Subway, Conoco, the Hangouts, Jay's Burger Dive, the whatever it's that salad place we get salads from. The salad place? The, the bakery? The bakery, that's the word. Which is closed. Never mind. <laughs> you don't have the bakery. We need someone to come open a restaurant here, like a Chick fil A. Yes. I you do. know, I heard of this guy, Chad, who can do restaurants. Risby? Rigby? Rigby, is that what it is? <laughs> He's a phenomenal chef. Interesting. I miss Blue Sage Do you Sage think he so would have much. ranch in his restaurant? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elma, Washington, that's cool. Where is Elma? I don't know. Stop asking me these questions, Sorry. Kaden. <laughs> I just won't look at you when I ask that question. I'll just, where look is up, Elma? <laughs> where is Elma? <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Hello. Hello. I hope you guys are staying safe. Rita says, thank you so much, Sarah, for doing this live. I promise not to bug you anymore. <laughs> you are welcome. I promised we would do it. And we're doing it. We, yeah. We're going to do this one. So if you are, this is one of your first lives tuning in. First of all, welcome. Second of all, we are doing a project that's actually from like six months ago-ish because we had to cancel the live that night due to a crazy storm. I think that was the reason, I can't remember. Well, we've only canceled like two lives. Yeah. So it was either crazy storm or technical difficulties. Either the internet wasn't working or there was a tornado warning or a hurricane yeah. warning. What's the one we get out here? Tornado. Tornadoes. Yeah, we get Sorry. tornadoes. <laughs> the Bible Belt. It's fine, it's fine, I'm fine. Who is from the same tiny town in California that I am from? What are the odds? I know, Alberta, California. It was so funny because he was like, I'm like, oh, I'm originally from Northern California, but I just recently moved to Missouri. He's like, oh, I used to be uh, in Northern California. Where at? I'm like, oh, Sacramento area, because nobody knows what Alberta is. Yeah. He's like, me too, but it's, he's like, but from a little town called Alberta. And I was just like, what? No. And I'm like, oh, I'm from Alberta. How big compared to Hamilton is Alberta? It's probably smaller than Hamilton, actually, but it's really? surrounded by so many cities. Oh. That you, like the elementary school that my daughter went to in Alberta was smaller than the Hamilton Elementary School. Interesting. So it was. it's a very small farming community, but there's so many larger cities surrounding yeah. it that it doesn't just, seem small. It takes like a few minutes to reach. 20 minutes, population. I'm in downtown Sacramento, you know, like I, that all that, that area. So pretty cool oh we're getting some freezing on the video yeah I was just gonna say we just got a, uh, a warning that we are st we are uploading very slowly okay so there's gonna be some freezing there's gonna be freezing. there may be guys. some feed cut out <laughs> would it help if I turned my Wi-Fi I don't know right. would it help if she turned her Wi-Fi off I have no Can idea. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll turn. I can't turn mine off. I'm monitoring things. No, don't turn yours off. You need it. I just got excited. <laughs> so. I was like, what a great idea. We'll limit <laughs> what we're using. Why do we even need the Wi Fi? <laughs> Let's shut it all down. Uh, oh, that one just. Oh, yeah, it's freezing a lot on mine. Mine's just really horrible quality. Can you. I can't pause our stream. Oh, it's freezing up so bad, you guys. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Focus is off. Well, oh, they figured it out. It's, it's us. It's better now? No. No? Not better. It's going to be pretty rough. Okay. You guys just power through this live with me. Yep. If you get too frustrated, we also have a pre-recorded tutorial of this project that you can watch, which will hopefully be helpful. Also, this will be in better quality once it's fully uploaded onto YouTube. Oh, okay. So once the live stream is over? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just takes time for like YouTube to finish its upload and render type deal. Okay. Yeah. If that, if you guys can't handle it, which I understand, I get really irritated when things freeze a lot. Just wait for the live stream to be over and you can tune in. It should be smooth sailing. 
<laughs> it is freezing so much. I can see it on my screen how much it's That's freezing. That's bad. This one's not freezing, but you can, I don't know, it might just be able to take more Wi-Fi. Oh, dear. Is YouTube better then? I don't think it's better. You guys look like you're... Tonight, we are doing the Golden Retriever. Ah! Ooh. <laughs> ah. Again, this project is not in your September box. This is a project from months ago that we never actually was able to do the live stream for, and so we're doing it tonight. Um, tonight, we have Kenan working video. Hello. Welcome. We have Thank Taylor you. helping us. She works for Let's Make Arts, does customer service. She checks my grammar to make sure I spell things correctly, which I'm very grateful for. Because there used to be a typo on every single step If you step remember step. the sunset, <laughs> oh, that was fun. That was fun. The turtle eyes. So, thank you. You also look beautiful. And we are using four colors tonight. So, the four colors we are using are dandelion yellow, black, sepia, and rose red. By the way, we looked up sepia, and you can pronounce it sepia or sepia. So nobody's wrong here. Everybody wins. Um, we are using a two brushes. <laughs> We're using a round six and a round two. They are Princeton Heritage Series 4050. Very wonderful brushes, high quality. They last a good while, and um, they're my favorite brushes. Um, again, I'll repeat those colors because I feel like I said that fairly fast. Black, sepia, red rose, yellow. Essentially, those colors are black, brown, red, and yellow. Okay? Thank you for the equally as fast name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I said those fast. Let me do it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we have an outline for this project. If you do not have the kit from May, you can go on our website, letsmakeart.com. Go to, pro is it named kits or projects on our website? Do you know? I think it isn't watercolor kits. I think it's watercolor kit. Find watercolor. Go to kits. Scroll through, through. You will find this picture. You will click on it, and then there will be a button that says download outline. You then click that. You can print this at home. And we are going to trace this. Um, Taylor, I just have one graphite paper. Okay. Here's your tape. So we'll, we'll trace and then we'll do our, our oath and then our warm ups and then paint. I have an extra sheet of graphite paper by my desk if you want to grab it or you can just wait. It's totally up to you. So when you use graphite paper, what you want to do is there's like a shiny dark side where all the graphite is. You're going to put that graphite side down in between your outline and the watercolor paper. Now, I like to tape my outline to my paper using painter's tape or washi tape because that way while I'm tracing, the outline won't move and so everything will be lined up. Then you take, you can use the back of your paintbrush, you can use a pencil, you can use a marker, and every line, um, and if it's too light, then just press down a little bit harder. But you tr want to try and make it as light as possible. Keenan. I want to let everyone know that currently the quality of our uploading is good, but it continues to go bad. So this is on our end. What might help you is if you pause the live and wait a couple minutes. It would be painful, but that will help your quality if you need more detail. I have never seen it free so yeah. bad. It keeps telling me to, uh, if we want to continue. Wow. Well, we're just going to keep on going with this. And if, if you guys get really frustrated and need to step away, we understand. <laughs> we won't be mad. <laughs> yeah. Take a snack break. Take it. Maybe go get some chocolate. Yeah. Maybe. I, I don't know. Speaking of food. Yeah. Emma just said, hey, Keenan, I just sent you a postcard about food. Oh. And I'm really excited about it. Oh. She's 11. We're friends. We go way back. <laughs> Emma, that sounds so great. I'm so interested to see. The quality is now at marginal. <laughs> <laughs> They're just sending us messages. Facebook is like, just stop.
Barbara said, I don't think you're meant to do this tutorial. <laughs> Barbara, I'm on the same page with you because never once have we run into this much freezing before. This is horrible. Yeah, we're losing a lot of viewers too. Yeah, we're the 137 on YouTube. <laughs> well, that's all right. Ooh, Teresa said she just poured a bowl of mini chocolate chips. I love snacking on chocolate chips. Can I just say my favorite are the bittersweet <clears throat> yes. chocolate chips from Ghirardelli. Is it Ghirardelli? Yeah. Yeah. So are they the semi-sweet kind or are they the milk chocolate? Okay, bittersweet is not semi-sweet. It's, it's, like it's like dark chocolate it's almost. It's like the same thing. The semi-sweet are gross. Okay. I want you to have an adult palate, and that means you need to embrace <laughs> <laughs> dark chocolate and bittersweet I chocolate. <laughs> I will continue to eat marshmallows that are drizzled in chocolate, and it will not be dark chocolate. It will be milk chocolate. I'll never forget how much, I mean, you and Brock were so disgusted that I bought dark chocolate Reese's. Mm -hmm. Like, they were mad at me, was and I was gross. just like, they're so much better. I think anything that's not dark chocolate is too sweet. And I agree. Is just, and it's better for you. Yep. Oh, Wendy says, please don't talk about chocolate too much longer. I'm on Weight Watchers. Oh. Wendy, Wendy good for you. good for you. And I would also just like to say that, unfortunately, while I am pregnant, I don't do well with sweets. So even though I usually have a crazy sweet tooth and I require Kenan to have a chocolate cupboard stocked for me, I can't eat. I can't eat the yeah. sweet stuff while I'm pregnant. It makes it's me sick. It's currently depleted. It's empty, and yeah. I, you haven't restocked it because I can't eat it. It's very sad to me. Yeah. And always the chocolate when I'm pregnant, it leaves such a strong, like, metallic taste in my mouth. It's such a bummer. It bums me out. Ooh. Amy said she's snacking on a mix of chocolate and peanut butter chips. Mm. Delicious. As long as they're milk chocolate. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bless you. I got really excited. Please I knew an answer to a question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, Linda said, when will the live class be for the hydrangeas? That is next Tuesday. Sorry, Linda. So we're releasing the pre-recorded tutorial tomorrow. We'll do the live next Tuesday. How's your outline coming, Taylor? Oh, I do you want a pencil? That's okay. <laughs> Sorry. I was just improvising. <laughs> Man, I really struggle getting it light. But it could also be because I was using <laughs> the the back end of the paintbrush will probably get a darker line yeah. naturally. Andrea, we are located in the same exact city as Missouri Star Quilt Company. Um, Shayla said, is there a close color to, to sepia? I have rum, raw umber, ripe sienna, burnt umber. Will any of these be close? I don't have sepia. Um, so probably, Shayla, if you do a mixture of the raw umber um, and a little bit of the sienna, that should probably work. It's just a brown. It's just kind of like, and I'll do a little swatch right here so you guys can see it. Sepia is kind of like a warm brown, like that. So from, I, if I remember correctly, burnt umber, umber is kind of like a desaturated brown and burnt sienna is a really, really reddish brown. So maybe if you do something in between. Are we doing five lives in September? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are. Because we got to do the four projects for September and then the tutorial tonight. Yep. So we'll do five. Sarah, my canine, says, question for Keenan. The picture on, is blurry on YouTube. When you officially post this, parentheses, when it is not live, uh -huh. will it still be blurry or will the focus be better? It will no longer be blurry it will just take a little bit for the quality to increase. If you pause the video for a minute or two, the quality will be better, but you'll be more delayed. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, Amy said, if you could only buy one wash brush, what size would you rec would you suggest? I would probably do either the three quarter inch or the inch wash brush. I don't work huge, so I usually don't like. Usually nine by twelve is the largest I go, so an inch is large enough for me. And I actually just used a three quarter inch the other day on this paper, and it worked great. So I would suggest one of those. Okay. Yeah, and if your lines are really dark, you can use like an eraser to try and lighten them up. It will not erase the lines completely, but like a kneaded eraser or like if I use my pencil eraser here, it does lighten it just a little, just a little extra. Okay, so we're gonna do some warm ups. So put your outline to the side. Get your paper. Let's do our oath first. So, if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. <laughs> Thank you. And I like to start off that way because, gosh, sometimes we don't realize how much we're holding our breath and thinking, uh oh, here we go. And you're kind of scared and nervous and don't be scared and nervous this is just paint on paper it's just fun so get your paintbrush so we're going to do a couple warm-ups now probably the biggest technique that i use in this project is i like to blend so i like to put my dark values down first and then blend so when you're doing things like the fur on the chest, and I'm just gonna sketch it out, you don't have to sketch it out, but like, let's say my fur chunks kind of look like this, okay? So what I like to do is I'll grab some color, and I'm just mixing all the colors in here to get a dark brown. So what I like to do is I'll go around these kind of little fur chunks that I have using this dark color. And then I will rinse my brush, hit the brush off the side of my cup so there's not excess water. I'll put this here so you guys can look at this. And then I'm actually going to pull down and transition to a lighter value. Now, there's a couple things that I want you guys to notice using this technique. One of them is if you are pulling from the very top of where the darkest part starts, you're gonna lose your darkest value. So usually when I pull values, I give my, I give my dark area a little bit of space and I pull from the bottom, yeah. If I started pulling from the top, then I would lose that dark and I want to leave that as dark as possible. The second thing I want you guys to notice so if this is my dark area, if I were to pull from the bottom and keep pulling, I can go a very far way, okay? Like if I just keep on going, keep on going. But sometimes we need our value transitions to stop because we run into another chunk of fur. So what I like to do is, let's say I paint a chunk here and I start pulling. If I say I only wanna pull to there, I can like stop right there and then I can actually push it up the other way too. So you could, depending on how you're moving your brush, you can either pull the color down, but if you run out of space and you don't wanna keep pulling that color, you can actually push the color up. And so any of that excess brown that's on your brush that's wet will get pushed back into the dark value space. So it's just a little a little tip of like, if you're pulling and you're like, man, this isn't getting any lighter and I can keep on going, just stop and then push your brush back the other way. And this, this technique is essentially the same thing as we do in our other warm ups, which is just a value transition. So if I were to take my paintbrush and completely, um, like, <laughs> I was about to say baptize my paintbrush in the paint. <laughs> <laughs> What's a better word for that? Aggrandize. 
<laughs> like submerge. Thank you. If you submerge your paintbrush in the paint and get the belly nice and full, then you can do your dark value here. And then almost immediately wet your brush, dry it off, and then just keep on going lighter and lighter. That's the same idea that we're doing here as this. We're just putting it in like the, the fur areas. Ashley says drench. <laughs> that is also a better word. <laughs> Flood. There's so many other words I could have used than Immerse. baptize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the other thing I want us to practice is actually doing um, kind of these fur brush strokes a little bit. So, and this is where round brushes are super handy because you can get a thick and thin line in the same brush stroke just depending on your pressure. So, if I get my paintbrush filled with paint, and like, let's say you're looking at like the hair on the ears here and also a little bit on the chest. What we want hair to kind of do is it's thick and then it kind of like waves and thins out. But it, it does take practice to like get the pressures right. So when I'm pushing down, I'm getting a thicker line and then as I lift my brush to get lighter pressure, it can go to a point. Yeah. And for me, it's actually easier for me to get a smoother line, like a more curved line, if I work quickly and I almost like, um, I'm kind of doing this instead where it's like, um, like a, a wisp, where it's like whoosh, 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 whoosh. Sometimes helpful if you make the noise. Taylor? Always helpful. Thank you. <laughs> the worst one. <laughs> So um, just kind of practice that, um, that like curved line that gets to a point at the end. So I'm actually like lifting my hand and my arm, I'm pulling away at the end. And if you need to kind of exaggerate that to help you, um, there's nothing wrong with being like, just try it, you know what I mean? Like you never know. Maybe that maybe that's how you get your perfect wisps, you know? So it's like just really like push down, lift up, push down, I had lift a, up. A brief uh, forgetfulness moment again. Yeah. And I forgot we were just doing warm ups and I was like, This This dog looks ridiculous. <laughs> Keenan's like, There's no way that's gonna turn out. <laughs> There's no way. You cannot bob rust this right now. Uh you're funny. So, and we're not doing that texture a lot. It's, it's mainly here, um, just kind of off the ears, because you know how like golden retrievers, they have those like long, soft, wavy, long hairs that are right on top of their ears, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we're using that for. And, Trying to think if there's anything else we really need to go over. <laughs> Alana's like, it's called painting with passion. <laughs> right, exactly. <Perfect. laughs> okay. Um, the other technique that we use is the, um, we kind of go back and we do details on top of things. So that's just, it's called wet on dry. So if you have an area that's already dry, probably one of the first warm ups we do. If you want to go back there and just like, do a few um, texture strokes on top just to see how that looks. Now when an area is wet, so let's say you just wet an area like so, and if you try and do texture strokes or detail strokes on top of it, it will just blend out because the paint will just diffuse across the water. That's why if you want your detail strokes to show up, you wanna wait for that underpainting to be dry. So then when you put stuff on top, it stays and you can see it. Uh, okay. Says, she says, this live is already helping me more. Oh, good. In all caps. So <laughs> I assume she's yelling at Maria, us. Maria, I'm so glad. <laughs> Um, also, what I would like to say too is this 
This was one of those things where our customers actually chose the photo that we use as a reference. So customers submitted pictures of their dogs. I think I chose five or six, and then the customers voted on which one they wanted to paint. In the pre-recorded tutorial, I include a printout of the original photo of the dog, and I show you how I get my outlines from original photos and what I look for. So if you're interested in that, look for that pre-recorded. Um, but I also would like to say that this is, a, this is a hard painting to do because the dog is looking at us almost directly, and that means it's foreshortened. We know that dogs have snouts that go out from their face, but when they're looking straight at us, it looks like it's a flat plane. So if you're having trouble creating those two planes and creating that sense of depth and perspective, it's super helpful for you to start with animals or people or whatever in profile, and which is what we're doing with the cat, which you'll see. If you already start with something that has a, has a perspective that isn't foreshortened by the angle, it's way more easier to communicate what's going on. So just a little warning, this one was hard because this dog is looking at us, okay? So you guys are doing great. Let's move on to our painting. Susan says, thank you again for playing piano for my boys. They loved it because I played for them. They did some lettering and uh, then they also, I, I said I noticed a piano and I said I'd like to hear them play and they posted a couple oh, videos and then I posted a video for them. That's so great. That was a great time. I love hearing when uh, people, especially kids, love piano. Yeah. Danison's chimed in. He said, hello, hello. Oh, Danison. So great to hear from you. Oh, I feel like I forgot an outline on my dog. They're asking for a sloth. Yes. For what? A sloth. <gasps> we'll do a sloth. You guys, sloths are my favorite animal. We 100% are going to do a sloth. Maybe two per year. <laughs> <laughs> the zoo has a sloth now. It does? I just got it last month. Maybe we should take a work field trip I and agree. take reference photos. I, agree. <laughs> I bet we could contact them and ask if we could do a live in their zoo. Zoo. These are great, all great ideas. You guys are great. I'm willing to ask weird questions. <laughs> and I'll need to go for, you know, editing purposes. Taylor will absolutely. She'll just have to listen to everything I'm right, saying right, and be right. like, no, no, no. <laughs> Wrong <laughs> grammar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Focus. We're going to do this. All right, so we're gonna start with putting our very first step, step one is putting the dark values in our dog. I would also like to say one other thing, which is for me as a painter, as a watercolorist, I like to put my dark values in first and then blend to my light. I would like to acknowledge that that is not the standard practice with watercolor. I understand that, I'm acknowledging that, but I would also like to say, you can approach painting however you want and there's no wrong way. This is how I feel comfortable doing it. If you feel more comfortable to putting your light values in first and starting with light washes and then doing medium washes on top and then darkest values on top, nothing wrong with that either. So I'm just acknowledging that there's different ways to approach paintings and I do it a little bit differently, especially if you've had watercolor training, please don't be angry at me. That's just how I paint. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna mix a dark brown because um, I can use straight sepia, um, but for me, that's just not quite as dark as I want it to be. And I could possibly just mix black with the sepia, but what happens is when you use only black to mix colors, it's gonna add a grayness to it and it's gonna automatically desaturate the color. So that's why I have the red and the yellow to bring some warmth and some color back in to my dark brown. So I've grabbed my sepia, I'm gonna grab a little bit of black which it makes it a dark brown, but it's kind of a gray brown. But if I add some yellow in there and I add some red, look how much warmer that brown is compared to that. So that's why I do the things that I do. Mm. For warmth. <laughs> For just a little color depth and warmth. Okay. <gasps> Shayla says there's a sloth rescue in Oregon that allows you to sleep with the sloths. And it's an what? what you if you done? ever came here, I would love to paint with you live. Shayla, if you don't do this immediately and take <laughs> pictures. Go live yourself. 
<laughs> if you are not already doing this, that is amazing. Okay, dark values. So I got my dark brown mixed on my brush. And so the dark values looking at my dog are between the eyes here, around the mouth on the right side, and underneath the eyes here. That's where we're gonna start. So I'm going to kind of follow my outline here and start putting in my dark values. And if you have a dog that's similar in structure to a golden retriever, I know it sounds really silly, but it's super helpful for you to feel your dog's face to understand what we're painting and why we're painting. If you feel a dog, they usually have a crease in between their brows right here, and it always goes in. And it's the same on humans too, where before the forehead and the nose meet, it goes back into this little notch. That's essentially what we're painting. If you follow, if you look at people or dogs, we have shadows underneath our eyes because those are our eye sockets, and it goes in and then it pops out where I, our eyeballs actually pop out. So like just feeling the forms on your faces or on your dog's face, really helpful to understand why you're painting it the way you're painting it. Okay, and then the right of the mouth. Shayla says it's on her bucket, bucket list for sure. Well, you get that done immediately, <laughs> Shayla. I feel like that's a priority. I feel like we should all stop doing what we're doing right now and go to Oregon and sleep with the sloths. I'm not sure. <laughs> Do you not share the same passion? I don't think for so. For sloths? I don't think so. <laughs> I just think they're so I amazing. feel like they're kind of dirty. I don't know. But here's the thing. They just lay there and their food crawls to them, Keenan. Imagine if this is all... I mean, all... They've, they've got it made. Imagine if this is what you do and then you're like, I'm hungry. And then you're just like, aphids, aphids. I'm not a fan of aphids myself, but <laughs> if it was milk chocolate chips. <laughs> they just all came. They crawled to you. Okay, so I got the little scoop. We have a shadow kind of up here. And it's like, I'm in my car. <laughs> Good for her. Uh, Class field trip. Well, I have to feel the, the facial structure of a yeah. sloth in order to paint it. <laughs> it's for research. <laughs> if that's the thing that you need to do. <laughs> I have to feel the things before everything I can paint them. Everything painted, I paint. Just, that's actually what you've had to we do. We just up start collecting like flamingos and stuff because I'm like, hold on, let me feel your eye socket. We have our own zoo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I had to mix some more dark brown. You well, that up, sorry. What? <laughs> what, Taylor? I'm sorry. If you have to touch everything um, in your school, <laughs> it's a little concerning. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's a valid point. We're doing a skull oh. for a bonus project for Halloween. You'll see that come out real soon. And uh, <laughs> Taylor is really it's concerned about where I get. I got a skull. Don't worry about it is all I got to say. <laughs> okay, so we're also putting some shadow in around the head. So this is kind of like the neck in between, you know, in between the space, the neck. I don't have to explain where that is or what that is. The thorax. <laughs> Nope, nope. And then also like the ears, we're gonna work to the right side of these fur marks. Because the ears are kind of curved, so they kind of like go in. We gotta show that curve by doing a darker value and then the fur in the front sticks out. It's gonna be a lighter value. We'll do the same thing on this side. Work to the left of the fur. Now, um, one problem, well, I don't want to say problem because we're not quite there yet, but the longer your paint dries on your paper, the harder it is to blend out smooth. And I don't know why, I'm wondering if it has to do with the humidity of where some people are at. For some reason, it's really hard once you put something down to blend it out. So I'm getting ready to move on to step two, which is we're gonna blend out to our lighter values 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab water and I'm going to start, I'm going to pull the color that I already put down for the dark value, similar to what we did in our warm up. And I'm just going to start spreading this color. If your color is not moving, which I have read instances of customers talking about that and I'm still trying to figure out how, there is nothing wrong with grabbing a little bit of paint on your brush and putting that color. Now I actually might do that anyway. I think I'm going to actually mix a little bit of orange with my red rose and my yellow um, because like, I feel like golden retrievers have like a coppery kind of color and I want to introduce that color to my dog. And if I just use only water to spread out, it's just going to be a lighter brown. Where if I use this m like orange mixture to spread it out simultaneously, it will have some more color depth and some warmth to it. Now, as you get further down on the nose, right kind of on like the outside of the, I don't know, I'm gonna call them lips. We want that to be a pretty light value. So what we're trying to communicate with this value change is that this part of the nose on the dog is back here, and then it's coming out towards us. So the way to communicate that foreshortening and that perspective is by changing up the values. If on the front of our nose, if it is the same value as this back here, if this entire area is the same value, it will automatically flatten up so it looks like one plane. And that's why we're trying to be really communicative and clear with our value transitions that the front of the nose is actually out here and the top of the nose where the eyes are, are back here. So it's that. What's up, Keenan? Could you put the blue tape under the reference photo, please? Oh, yeah. Is it too glary? Yes. Let's see if this will do it, actually. Is that helpful? Kind of just moved the glare. <laughs> Can you hand me the tape? Oh, sorry. You said blue tape. Oh, it's fine. That's it's fine, fine, Taylor. Pay it's fine. Pay perfect. attention. That's perfect. Okay. Oh, jowls. Yeah. Muzzle. Yes. That These are all good. better words than what I used. What? What did you say, Keenan? Value sculpting. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. We're just going to keep... Now, on the left side of the dog, the darker value is actually a little bit closer to the edge of the cheek and then it gets lighter. And this is something to kind of pay attention to and it's really hard if you're not familiar with watercolors but you're familiar with oils and acrylics which is your tendency is going to be to use these watercolor paints as re regular paints and only use your water for rinsing. But with watercolor, the water is, you have to envision it as a paint itself, as a paint color itself. So like most of what I've already painted, I use just water and pulled color from my initial lay down of putting in the dark values. So I know that that's not our first, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not natural for us to, to use water to paint, but that's essentially what we're doing. So I'm going to avoid the eyes, like the eyes themselves. I'll do like underneath the eyes and around the eyes, but I don't want to paint the eyes just yet. That's a little bit later. But I forgot to put in my little shadows on the top here. And if you forgot to put a darker value in and you put the light value in first, don't fret. You can always layer. So I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot to fill in those dark brows. Well, that's okay. I'll just do it right on top. 
no biggie. And I'm just going to do another layer of this orange color because it just needs to be brighter. A little bit more colorful. We did do the oath. We did do the oath. Yes. I remember it. I remember it well. Now, the other risk that you guys might run into by doing this method of putting your dark values in and then blending is you could potentially blend out your dark values altogether. That happens to me sometimes. It's not a big deal. The beautiful thing with watercolors, you can always go back in with another layer of dark value and put that in. So if you have to re go back in and redefine some of these dark values, nothing wrong with that. Okay, now there is a little bit of a darker value right on the edge of my, what, did, what, what were the words that people came up with that were better? Muzzle. Muzzle, jowls. Jowls, just a little bit. And there's an extra little value change right there just to show that it's round. Oh, I just got really hot all of a sudden. Did you? Back here. I've been Ooh. For a minute. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. So let's keep on blending out. Let's do the ears. And then we'll move on to the body and let the, the head dry while we work on the body. And then we'll come back to the head. So again, just using water to spread out. If you want your color to be more saturated and vibrant, more that rusty color, mix some orange in and use orange to spread out these values. Hmm. Uh, Nancy says, you mentioned bringing animals to you. Back in the day, Hallmark kept a small zoo-like area to bring animals over from the zoo for their top artists. Yes. And I know that Disney and Pixar actually, um, when they're doing illustrations and putting their character design together and stuff like that, they'll go out and look at, like I remember watching the Disney Channel when they did like Lion King 2 or something and they brought lions in. Baby lions and adult lions to the studio so they can sketch and draw and understand understand the lion. If you put color down and it's too strong, Amy, it seems like that's what you're saying, you can always lift color up. So let's say I decide to put orange right here and then I'm like, whoa, that is very strong. All you gotta do is wet the area, take your paper towel, which I hope you guys have handy, you should always have a paper towel handy, and just blot, okay? That will pick up the extra color, then you can take some brown and just cover color over it, okay? No biggie. And then it's gone. Not a big deal. Okay. Wanda says they did that for Bambi too. I think they did that especially when they were doing hand-drawn illustrations before they moved to computer animation. I mean, I'm sure they still do it in the beginning for computer animation, but yeah. I know that they had to have those references. But still, they'll go out. Like, I know when they did, like, Coco, they went to... Or Ratatouille, they flew their team out to France to eat in five-star oh, okay. restaurants. I would be horrified to do that because rats are disgusting. <laughs> but they wanted to get that feel of, like, that restaurant experience feel, yeah. including the noises that you hear and things like that. It's really interesting. Clara says, I wonder if Disney felt the lion's eye sockets. <laughs> <laughs> probably. I mean, if they were serious about their job. They probably did. <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. 
Okay. <laughs> so we're going to move on to step three. We're going to do the dark values on the body. This is where we're going to do a lot of um, what we did in our warm up. Really quick, Amy just said, my golden retriever is all black. So Ooh. she must have a, um, like a chocolate lab or a black lab. Do you tone differences? Yes, yes, yes. So usually there's color undertones to black. Most of the time they're cool colors like blue or purple. It really depends on the lighting though. So, but I usually use blue for different tones in black. What, why are you looking at me like that? Becky B says rats are sweet. I love my boys. <laughs> I'm assuming I that she has rats. Michael's aunt Nicole had two pet rats and she loved them so much. I just have They're had smart, I think. Mice They're and rats little. in my houses since <laughs> I'm a baby and I just hate them. Cuz they eat things. I think if they're pets. If they're pets, they're probably yeah, that's clean what she's saying. and gentle. Yeah. And they don't have terrifying eyes and claws. <laughs> okay, so I'm taking my dark brown and similar to what we did in our warm up, I'm going in and working underneath these um, kind of fur sketch marks that we're painting. And so essentially what I'm doing is, and this, I say this a lot, so I'm sorry if you've heard it a lot, but it's true. When you're doing things like hair, leaves, grass, fur, when you're working with individual tiny, tiny little things, your brain is going to tell you that you need to take the time to draw out every single one of those hairs because we know that dogs have individual hairs and so we're like yes we'll draw individual hairs same for humans hair things like that but actually they gather into chunks and then those chunks layer on top of each other and create shadows and work in and out through each other and that is what we're trying to paint and that is going to give us that realistic feel of depth of volume and of shape if we sat here and just did a million like straight lines, it will be look completely flat and it won't have that same feel of layers of fur or that form. Okay, now on the right hand side, the top of the fur that's coming out here is actually dark. So this side, and that's because it's coming out from underneath the neck. Um, the chest is farther away from us than the chin. So automatically this is going to have a darker value back here. So on the right, and, it, and again, these rules are really dependent on your light source. So if our light source is coming from the left hand side here, these are going to be highlighted because the light's hitting them. These ones are going to be more shadowed because they're coming out from underneath the neck and the light is not hitting them directly. Mary asks, do you ever do a wet wash background with a color or are you just usually focusing on the image you are painting? Um, my personal style, personally, is I, I like a more illustrative style where it's usually just the subject on a white background. I love a clean white background. So um, most of the time I don't do backgrounds or washes on backgrounds, but you can if you want. That's just a personal preference. I just think there's something so clean about a white background. I don't know, I just love it. Okay, so I'm putting in some of my shadows. I'm gonna mix some more dark brown because I am using a lot of it. And if you wanna do extra little fur chunks that aren't here, absolutely you can. The outline, I want you guys to keep in mind, it's just a guide. You don't have to follow it exactly. Maybe you don't like how I do outlines and you just want to do your own thing. Absolutely no nothing wrong with that. You guys have complete freedom over this painting. It's yours. You're the artist. Okay, so I put in my dark values and now I want to go in and do my light values and I'm going to blend, similar to what we did on the face, I'm going to blend them out. So starting from where kind of my shadows are, I'm going to start blending out these darker values. 
Now the biggest thing is you have to lift up your paintbrush. You have to let there be light and medium and dark values within this area or else it will all flatten out into one value which will make it seem like it's on one plane and there isn't any texture. So don't be afraid to lift your brush, leave some white spaces, leave some highlights. And the beauty about lifting your brush is if you ever leave too many white spaces and you're like, no, 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 that's, that's too many, you can just paint on top of it. But you cannot lift paint up, and you can't erase in watercolor. You can lighten, but you can't leave white spaces after you've already painted an area. So I like to get you, I want you to err on the side of like, I'm gonna lift up my paint brush maybe a little bit too much because you can always go back in and add darker values. I've got a couple dog jokes I've been saving up. <laughs> I'm really excited, let's do this. <clears throat> dog joke. What did one dog say when the other one said hello? What? He said, ah, a talking dog. <laughs> that reminds me of the muffin joke. Have you heard that one? No. There were like two muffins in an oven, and one said, it's hot in here. And the other one said, ah, talking muffin. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a screaming thing. Maybe I read it wrong. Maybe the other dog screamed. <laughs> well, the muffin one, there's definitely screaming, but maybe this is a calm dog. He's chill. Ah. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Okay. Now one thing that I noticed, I blended out my browns on my fur, but then I realized that because we're mixing our colors, I had two different colors going on. My head was more warm because I added orange to my blending out mixture, and so I'm like, oh, I need to go back into my chest area and add a little bit of orange or yellow so then the colors are similar between the head and the body. They don't have to be exact. You're gonna have different shades here and there. But if I, if I, was, if I didn't add any orange or yellow, then the, it would look like two different dogs. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> my friend from high school, okay, that talking muffin joke was one of my favorite jokes. <laughs> And my friend was high school, just started laughing. She's like, I remember you saying that in high school. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jessica, I love you. What is a dog's favorite button on a remote? What? Pause. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and again, you might blend out your dark values doing this. So if you need to go back in and put some darker values back in, that's, that's okay, that's what we want. We want to get that feeling of layers. I think the next dog I'm going to do is gonna be a little bit easier. This is a harder this is a harder project, so if you're getting frustrated and you feel like you're not being successful with this one, give yourself a little bit of a break because this is kind of difficult. And I think it might be better if the next dog I do, I do kind of more of a profile. And I don't know. I don't know, I gotta think. I gotta think of how I can do an easier dog. A corgi, that would be so <laughs> cute. Anthony loves corgis. Beagle. Why did the snowman name his dog Frost? Why? Because Frost bites. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got my furs. How are you doing, Taylor? Fine. Yeah, I think that looks really good. And again, if you guys were just to focus on this area of my painting, if I'm only looking right here, I'd be like, what is that? I don't understand what's going on. 
So don't get so focused in on this area that you lose sight of the entire picture. Once I take it away and I put it into context that there is a dog's head, then it makes more sense of what's going on down here. Yes, this does look really loose and messy right now. That's okay. Well, we're gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna go back in and do a couple detail lines after it dries. But for right now, I'm like, okay, I have some light, medium, and dark values. I have some shading. I have a little bit of hints of where some fur is gathered and where it kind of splays out. Like, that's, that's good and I'm gonna leave that and let that dry and then I'll go back in with these kind of more detail brush strokes like we were practicing with the whooshes and the and the I was about to say whips. whips. I never said whips, but it felt right. <laughs> Whip. Whip. <laughs> okay. Now, um, before we move on to the eyes and the nose and the mouth, I realized that I forgot to put in the dark value in between this left cheek and this ear. So I'm gonna just do that really quick. I'm gonna mix it dark brown. Okay, and I'm just going to put that space in. There we go. There we go. Susan promised her son, Daniel, to ask if you will ever paint a chameleon, a parrot, and a snake. Ooh. I will a thousand percent do a parrot. A chameleon sounds really good. A snake would be really interesting. I don't know if I've actually ever painted a snake. But right. the chameleon would be fun because they have those great eyeballs that stick out a lot. That would be yeah. fun to paint. And a joke for Michael. My husband, Michael? Yes. Oh. How are a dog and a marine biologist alike? How? One wags a tail and the other tags a whale. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's the best. He makes me so happy. Okay. That was for him, not from him. Oh, it wasn't from him? Just to be clear, yes. When you said that, I was like, well, yes, he is so great. <laughs> I said, as if, I said him. my husband, Michael. And I said, yes, for Michael. <laughs> you led me to believe that it was my husband telling me but the joke I didn't by say saying it was, it was my husband telling me the joke. <laughs> nope. Okay. All right, all right. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop messing around. And I'm going to do the eyes and the nose and the mouth. So let's start with the mouth. I'm gonna to switch to my round two. And we're just gonna put mouth lines in and then once that dries, we're gonna blend them out a little bit to create a shadow. We don't wanna do that right away though because we don't want the shadow to be too heavy and we don't wanna lose our mouth lines. So I'm gonna just use my two, pick up some black and I'm just going to follow these kind of lip lines that I have going on here on the mouth, like so. And it's a little bit darker right where the mouth meets the nose, just a little bit of space. Okay, and that's all we're gonna do for right now for the mouth. Then for the nose, I'm gonna take black and I wanna mix a little bit of red in there so it kind of makes almost a purpley color. On the bottom part of the nose, so dogs' noses, they have the top and then it tucks under where the nostrils are. Almost always the top of the nose is going to be a lighter color than the bottom of the nose because the bottom of the nose, same for humans, goes back in. So this part is gonna be highlighted and then underneath where the nostrils are, there's gonna be a shadow or a darker value. So using just black, I'm going to do the bottom part of my nose, avoiding, and if you look, there's my nostril, and then on the nostril, just on the bottom part, I left a little bit of space where there's a little bit of a line for glare because noses are wet. Sarah, uh, yeah. there's a question. What yeah. is your favorite color? Oh, I have 
that's really hard. But I tend to say yellow. I like a good warm yellow or like a mustard. That's a good color. It's Mine happy. always changes. Uh huh. But lately I've been loving the sunset orange. Ooh. Delicious. Ooh. It's good. So then my black is going to go all the way to this line that I have here on my nose. Like so. Rhonda says, I'm not good at mixing colors yet. Couldn't you just use a brown and maybe yellow and orange instead of all those colors? Well, who said that? What was her Rhonda. name? Rhonda. Rhonda, that is essentially what we are using. We are using brown and yellow and black and red. I could just use a straight orange, however, instead of having yellow and red, but I wanted red in there to mix with my black for my nose. And I needed, I wanted a little bit of yellow in there for my highlights on my dog. So if you wanna use just straight orange, Absolutely you can. This is your life and your painting. You can do whatever you want. But sometimes what I like to do is I'll do the primary colors that you use to mix the secondary colors, and then I have the freedom to use those colors as well. So instead of being stuck with one color, I have three now that I can put in my painting. When it comes to the nostrils, what I like to do is using a damp brush, I'm gonna wet the area with the nostrils, where the nostrils are, so using just water. And then I'm gonna drop in the black. And I don't know why, but when I do this, the black tends to stay darker than if I just picked up black on my brush and put it straight onto my nose. It dries darker. Again, I don't know the science as to why, but that is what I've experienced. So that's what I do. Now when you get to the top of the nose, I'm gonna use more of this like purpley color. Um, it kind of has undertones of like, um, I don't know, it reminds me of copper undertones. So I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow in there and I'm going to just do the top with that color But you want to mix black in there too. Like I just used that yellow red mixture. It didn't have enough black in it to where it felt like this was actually part of the nose. Does that make sense? It's the same problem I ran into with my head and my chest. So I mixed a little bit of black in there so it had that gray undertone that would have on the actual nose. There we go. And that feels better. That feels like it's actually part of the nose. And then the top of the nose actually has a little bit of black on there too. The very top. So by putting that top part of that nose, that lighter value, it's showing that it's highlighted and it gives that nose a little bit more form. And if you want to like do right in the middle, even a lighter, while it's wet, I can just do a little swoop right in the middle and do even an extra little highlight right in the middle of the nose. Now, for the eyes, you're still going to want to use your round two. And we're going to put in our black part on our eyes and let that dry, and then come back and do the colored portion, so like the, the uh, iris. So I'm gonna grab black. And using just black, I'm going to do, ooh, that has too much water on it. The outer ring here.
How many shades are there in the Dandelion Co. paints? Are there somewhere around 27, 28? That sounds right. I don't know the exact number. I don't know. It's either. less than 30 and more than 20. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> These kind of, this dog has the, kind of like droopy eyes a little bit. They're a little bit, uh. He's an older dog. Yeah. Old Sammy. And then the black part of the pupil. Now remember to leave two little white spots in the pupil for glare. Okay. Do the same thing on the other side. And what I started doing after this project, which I don't know if it's actually been helpful or not, but when I do eyes, I paint on the outline, I color in the black part on the pupil. Because sometimes when you see ring, 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 there's like four rings in a row, you're like, wait, which one is actually black? So I started doing that to help you kind of see what is what. And then we're gonna let that dry for a little bit and move on to another area. This is too wet that if we tried to put the iris in right now, the brown or the orange color and the black would bleed together. So we're gonna move on to a different area while we're waiting for this. And I'm gonna go back to the mouth and blend out. So if you look at the mouth, um, dogs usually always have like from where those lips meet their nose on the front of their snout. There's always a little bit, depending on the coloring of the dog, it's either pink or like grayish black. Just right there, it's a little bit darker. And then it lightens up as they get to the sides of their um, muzzle. So I'm gonna just take that black that we used to do the mouth line and just take a damp brush and just blend that out. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You wanna make sure that the black is not darker than the nose. And if you actually wanna mix a little bit of brown in there so it's not just gray, you absolutely can. We just wanna darken that right at the mouth, but we don't want it darker than the nose. And then this chin has a shadow on it as well. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit of this dark brown and put that in there. So the goal essentially is these, the sides of the mouth, the bottom jaw and the fur that's coming from the neck need to be three different values. They need to be different from each other. And if that means you gotta really darken this bottom lip to make it clear, that's what you have to do. I think that's what I did in this reference photo here. You can see that this bottom jaw is pretty dark, especially compared to the chest. So I would say this is my darkest value, this is a medium value, and this is a lighter value. Now my lip line kind of disappeared on my right hand side from blending. That's okay, I'll put that back in. Not a big deal. You can always put things back in, so if they blend out, don't stress. What do you get when you cross a bird, a car, and a dog? Bird, car, and a dog. What? A flying carpet. <laughs> Gosh, I love that. You, you guys are funny. 
Sarah. Yeah. How many times do you paint a subject before you send it to us? <laughs> that truly depends on the subject. Sometimes I can knock it out first try. Other times, like that tulip jar that we did in April, the yes. jar of tulips, I probably painted that jar eight times before I got it right. And that wasn't even detailed. That was just like a, just a quick jar. So it depends. It changes depending on what. That was a cool project. What I'm painting and how I'm feeling. Okay, so we did, I'm waiting for my eyes to dry a little bit more before I go back to them. So while I'm waiting, I'm kind of going to mess with the other parts of my dog. You might not need to do these things because maybe your painting doesn't need them, but I'm just going to put some shadows back in, introduce some warmer colors on my dog. Now, now you can see I left like a small white area around the eyes of my dog. So I'm gonna, essentially that's just gonna be a darker value. So I'm just gonna go in and put that in now. So using like a dark brown, I'm gonna do kind of this shadow underneath this black part. And then on the top of the eyelid. This is the kind of dog you'd put in the back of your Chevy Silverado uh, four-door, four-wheel drive <laughs> with low mileage. Are you dreaming of your future vehicle at this moment? Yes. <laughs> What if we set up a Patreon for like help Keenan get a get a reliable car? <laughs> <laughs> a reliable car that he doesn't have to take apart once a month. Because although he's been living in Missouri most of his life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he has gotten a vehicle that is not four wheel drive and is essentially useless in the snow. And Don't, it's, I'm and trying it's... to sell it. Don't <laughs> tell people that. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, how long have you had that car? Three years. It's really only been three years. Yeah. No, it's already been three years. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know why, but in my head, you've had it for like 10 years. Yeah, it's taken forever <laughs> to get used to it. It was fun to drive. It's rear wheel drive. It's terrible in the snow. Because whenever it starts snowing here at the store. Sometimes if it rains hard enough, I can't get <laughs> Keenan's home. Keenan's like, crap, I'm not going to be able to get home. I got to go. I need a I'm ride. like, what on earth possessed you to purchase this vehicle? <laughs> The speed <laughs> the at speed. which it travels. <laughs> Debbie said you have to start getting paid for this. <laughs> Debbie, don't remind oh, him that he has to that would help a paycheck so in much. Months. If I had a no. paycheck, I'd be able to get a car for sure. No, but then you would miss out on this wonderful opportunity of being a part of Let's Make Art. I'll actually be in Washington next month for five days. Where at? I say that because there's a comment on uh, YouTube. And I always, because her name is Tree Hugging Buddhist, that's all I want to call her. So that is the <laughs> name in my head. But um, she says, seriously, hit me up. I'll be out there with my my girls and my wife. Tree Hugging Buddha, show Kenan, show Kenan around Washington. Yeah. yeah. I'll be in, I believe it's the Bremerton, maybe Kingston, Mickey. It's Mickey, that's what it is. Mickey White? I know nothing oh. of Washington. No, that's, no, that's the name. That's her name. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, I think I'll be in the Bremerton area. Edmonds is coming to mind. 
the Puget Sound. Peninsula. <laughs> just some other words. I feel like you're just saying words that uh, don't make any Chicago sense. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's finish these eyes and then we'll do the finishing details because we got to go back on those ears and um, do, clean up the chest a little bit. So, on the eyeballs, we're going to paint them. <laughs> we're going to paint the irises. And I'm going to mix kind of an orangey color with this yellow and red. You can decide how orangey or yellow your eyes want to be. I would just suggest making them slightly different from the color of the fur, but then again, you don't have to because it's your painting. When you do this, your purest color is going to be on the bottom of the eye, and then near the top of the eye, you will have a shadow. So put a little bit of brown or black in there because the eyelid is casting a shadow on the eyeball. I need more yellow. I want these to be more colorful. So again, it's going to have a darker value near the top of the iris where it's peeking out. And then the bottom part of the eye is where you're going to have your lighter value. And it's the same concept. I think I go more into detail in the eagle tutorial because the eye is pretty big in that one. So it's a little bit easier to see what I'm talking about. Okay, so there is that. Now, if you are trying to make something darker and it's really wet and you keep on doing layers and it's not getting any darker, um, wait for it to dry and then come back and make it darker. So sometimes the best thing to do in watercolor is just to move on to a different area and then come back to it after, after it's dried for a little bit. This dog looks sad. It does look sad. It's a, it's a somber dog. He knows more than we do. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to move on to the ears. So, um, on the right hand side, I'm going to be doing a couple of these like wispies that we practiced in our warm up. So, I'm going to put those shadows in if I lost them, which I did a little bit. And then I can put in some. Just a couple little fur lines where the hairs are coming off of the ear. And then kind of near here at the top too. So it's like wish, wish, wish. Catherine wants to know if it's plagiarism if she copies this. Depends on what you're doing with it. Like, um, uh, how do I explain this? If we, so I had to contact the person who posted this photo to get permission to use the photo as a reference for my kit. It's usually, like standard practice is if you are using a photo directly, copying from it, um, you could potentially get in trouble for that if you sell it. If you're just using them to practice, which I there's no harm in that. So if you're not selling it, then you can use whatever you need to copy and to practice. That's actually how you learn. You gotta copy to practice and to learn. If you are starting to sell what you are making based off of, um, based off of work that isn't yours, and that even includes photography, then it is plagiarism. So 
it just depends. It's situational. So if you're just if you're just doing it to learn, there's nothing wrong with that because you're not selling it. It's when you start to sell it that you get in trouble. Clear? Clear. For us at Let's Make Art, we are okay with you selling the originals that you make with us. So if you painted this dog and your neighbor loved it and reminded her of her dog Sam and she wanted to buy it from you, we're totally okay with that. I will say that we are the exception. Most companies and most artists do not let you sell the work that they do through tutorials. We're just really nice. We are nice. For now. For now. Okay. Now the same thing on the right hand side, I got to put my dark values back in. So kind of do those like detail wisps a little bit. And then on the top, they kind of like have some hairs that kind of curl out. There we go. And just by just by redefining those values and doing those curly whips, my ears have a depth to them that they didn't have before. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the chest. So we're on the very last step now, and this is where it's a good idea to take a step back from your painting, look at your painting objectively and see okay, what are some areas that I need to go back in and work on? What are some areas that are overworked? What are some areas that I need to leave alone, et cetera? So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna kind of redefine some of my shadows. And then if you wanna do a couple like fur detail lines on top where it's highlighted, so we're doing kind of like the same thing that we did in our warm except thinner. So I'm using more the tip of my brush to kind of do these little little uh, wisps here. And then these ones are gonna be more thicker. So just by putting in those little lines of texture in between, those hints of the areas where those, the fur kind of separates, and we're just kind of bringing a little bit of that extra, we're making our paintings a little extra, you know? in a good way. So again, your tendency is gonna do these marks across the entire thing, cause you like them and you're like, oh yeah, that's looking really, okay, I'm gonna do that like crazy. Don't go crazy with it. Just do a little bit here and there. If you go crazy with it and do these same marks across the entire thing evenly, it will flatten it. Yeah, there we go, there we go. And if you wanna do a few like rougher textures on the edges, if you, use a paint, if you use a dry paintbrush, you can get a really cool texture. Like this is not a lot of water on my brush and it kinda has that rough texture. You can do that too here, where it's like just a little hint of that roughness on the edge here and there. I think it makes it cool. Okay. I think we're good. Now again, this is one of those this is one of those projects I would like to mention. It is challenging. This is a challenging one. So if you're a new beginner and you're staking your whole worth of an artist on this project, First of all, calm down and don't do that. Second of all, maybe do another project first, get used to watercolor before you tackle something like this. Third is if I hung this up and I walked by it a few days, I can probably come back to it and make some adjustments. So this is one of those projects where you'll probably have to work at it a little bit, step away from it for a while and come back to it with fresh eyes. So you can be like, okay, what is, what's going on here? What's, what's happening? So, um, before I tell you, before I say my goodbye, people are wondering why I moved to Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm from Northern California. 
I moved here a year and a half ago to start Let's Make Art. Um, my business partner, who I started this with, is from Hamilton. He started the Missouri um, quilt company with his family about 10 years ago, and then he stepped away from that and decided to start an art company. And I was an artist that he knew from college. We were just acquaintances. And he just called me up on the phone one day and was like, hey, do you want to start an art company with me? And I was like, sure. And he's like, well, I live in Missouri and it would be really hard to package all these orders from by myself. Would you be willing to move out here? And I was like, sure, <laughs> why not? So that's what we did. It really was because I was flying back and forth for the lives in the beginning. So I was gone half of the week. I would fly out here Sunday night from California and fly back Wednesday. And I have two young girls and a husband and I never got to see them. So after about six weeks of flying back and forth for the lives, my husband's like, let's just move out there. <laughs> let's just move. So we did. It's funny to hear Al tell the story because it's exactly the same where you were like, sure. <laughs> That's really let's how Let's do I, this. I'm like, what can go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I'm kind of like that. So it worked out. Let's Make Art has been really great and um, more successful than I think anybody really anticipated, which is wonderful, and it's because of you guys. It's because you're wonderful and you're kind and you're willing to learn and you're willing to try something and put yourself out there and be in a vulnerable spot, which is really hard to do. So, like, good job for doing this. If you painted this with us, we want to see it. Um, so post it on Instagram. You can tag us, Let's Go Make Art, or hashtag Let's Make Art. We have a wonderful Facebook community called um, Let's Make Art Watercolor. It is quite large, um, but it's a place that's um, really encouraging, and everyone knows that we are all, all are on different watercolor stages, and it's not fair to compare what we're doing with another person. It's not, if Keenan was sitting right here and painting next to me, it's not fair for him to compare because I have been watercoloring for years, daily, and he doesn't have that practice. Taylor is a amazing um, uh, colored pencil artist. Like, she did a portrait of Nicole that was un real. And if I tried to do that, it wouldn't turn out the same because I don't have the experience in colored pencils that Taylor does. So we can't compare ourselves along this journey because we all have different experiences and we're all at different stages and learning differently. So don't, don't just think it's something that you're born with and it's not for you because it absolutely is. It just takes practice. So you can join any of those communities. Keenan, you ready to do the close-ups of our dogs? Yes, I was wondering if, yes. Okay. Okay. Tell us when you are ready. Taylor, you're going first in three, two. <laughs> and we have Taylor with her beautiful dog. Taylor, what's its name? Oh. Buddy, I used to have a here. Oh, that's great. Okay, there's Taylor. <laughs> Moving on. Here's Sarah. Brought to you by Let's Make Art. <laughs> we have the dog named... Thomas. Thomas. Sirius. Somber. His middle name is Sirius. <laughs> Tomber Sirius. Tomber Sirius. Cray. <laughs> so this is my dog. Did I tell you that somebody tagged me on Instagram of a Jimmy Fallon like gif of him doing this? No. He is so great. That's awesome. <laughs> so anyways, you guys are amazing. Thank you for tuning in and being patient. We released this tutorial months ago, but we hopefully the live, you were able to um, get something from it that the pre-recorded wasn't giving you. And again, I would like to say this is a hard, hard project. I'm going to tackle the dog another time, and I'm going to figure out a way that it, it's not as complicated as this one we've done here. But if you did this, kudos to you. You're amazing. And share your work. I know it's scary. And you guys are amazing. That's all I gotta say. Hydrangea tutorial releases tomorrow for September. So September box officially starts tomorrow with the hydrangea. You're gonna love it. That's it's gonna be it. Great. Bye.